Welcome back everybody to this week's episode of Taking a Breath. In this week's episode, I'm talking to Amanda Valentine about the importance of learning from your mistakes. This past year, she and I managed an 80 person event that was going around the clock 24 hours for a week straight. And so we learned a lot about each other, about the team we were working with and, uh, and about the participants. And so there's a lot to be heard, a lot to be learned, um, but I hope you enjoy this week's video highlights. And this one is definitely one that was a lot of fun because realistically, you know, we all, our, when we're looking back at our mistakes, we're laughing about them and some of the things that we learned. So um, we had a lot of fun with this and I definitely would encourage you guys if you like the video highlights today to make sure that you watch the full audio version as well. Thanks so much and enjoy. It was cool because as we're talking um, with, as, with the exec board before starting, each committee um, that I was overseeing with um, event planning, community outreach, marketing and recruitment, and then um, leadership development, with all four of those, we're kind of trying to figure out how we can subdivide these. And with Amanda's, it was kind of unique and, and cool that she had these four different um, areas where people are able to really invest where they are interested. And I think that's something that just for, for any leader, um, you know, you have to figure out how to get people to invest where they're interested and invest where they feel like they can be making a difference. And so I think, you know, that's, that was kind of the first thing, you know, when we're thinking of, about that earlier about, so, earlier about ownership is like when you were first thinking about that as like, this is our, our thing now and really giving that sense of ownership to everyone individually, because whenever you as a leader are able to provide that sense of ownership to people, then they're naturally going to, you know, take the lead and, and want to work harder versus the sense of requirement, which is what you mentioned. Like, yes, we have this requirement. You're a part of this group, do this thing, mm -hmm. but giving it that sense of, okay, just because you're, it's a requirement doesn't mean that you shouldn't also feel that sense of ownership. So I love that, that contrast as well. Yeah. And so it's always more fun when it's not just a, you must do this. No, yeah. like, let's market it differently. Be like, you know what, you're going to come out, you're going to have a great time. You know, you yep. might get some free swag along the way, you know, yeah. versus if I was just like, you have to go do five hours at the shack today. No yeah. one's going to want to do that. I right. Mean. No, for sure. Yeah. And I think that with the community that we were kind of trying to build anyway, was marketed towards like servant leadership and really wanting to like understanding the goal, right? And you mentioned it earlier, it's raising money for Habitat for Humanity, which is working towards, uh, you know, creating houses and, and kind of sustainable housing for, for people who may not have had access to it. And so I think that th that concept of really pushing the end goal is an, an additional way that we really helped to have, have people understand this concept of like this project, yes, like you're, you may be sleeping in the shack or you may be, you know, <laughs> whatever, the, you know. Yeah. All the people who want to be there are the people who go out of their way to continuously sign up for volunteer positions and events where they can go out and give back. And you really only see the people who don't participate in any of these events, even, you know, the fun events, like let's go out and go ice skating or broom ball are the yeah. people who they don't, they don't really want to be there or they have found something better that they right. want to do. And they are kind of micromanaging their time. And they're saying, well, maybe instead of going to this village event with all the people I live with, instead, I'm going to go to my fraternity's mixer this weekend right. or what have you, because sure. in their mind, that is what's going to help propel them forward at their time at stake to do this. I mean, yeah. a lot of people just, they come into college thinking they're just going to sip the Kool-Aid and everybody they meet is going to be their best friend. And honestly, yeah. that's how it is for the first week. And then the second week hits and you're like, okay, well, how do I keep up with all these new connections? And yes. especially now when you're going to be walking around campus wearing a mask, like we are, yeah. it's, people are going to be less approachable because, you know, of the pandemic. So you just really got to think outside the box in ways. Yes. How can I build my group of yes. people? And that's a great way to do it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, create, there's so much opportunity to create ways and you just have to really be creative. People are going to be so, um, in my, in my mind, people are, it's going to be so easy to sit in your room all day and not want to do anything because a, like there's the legitimate concern of like, okay, there's a virus going around, but yeah. then there's the added, like, what are people going to think of me? All of these types of things. 
And my number one advice for college students is like, everyone is in the same boat. No one is sitting in their room thinking, I am so glad I, I am just hanging out by myself or, or that, especially if it's your first week going into college, like that you aren't the you aren't the only one that doesn't no. know anybody that whole hallway exactly. full of people on the exact same thing I mean we went door to door both yes. years meet new people I mean sometimes you really just gotta force your way through that doorway and be like hello my name is you just, <laughs> just you just gotta get it out there I know it's really hard for people to be like oh my god I've never met this person how do I even approach it's so easy you just you walk up you're like hey I know we're both new. I just wanted to let you know this is who I am. This is where you can find me. If you ever want to hang out, Zoom, here's the link. <laughs> yes. Like, here's my to, phone number, FaceTime me. Like, it is what it is. Winning. To clarify, like, period. Oh, Creative. Yeah. Because people are so used to just having stuff handed to them. Like, I, I used to be doing that um, delivery stuff. I used to be um, delivering furniture to people. And I was doing this with a team of guys at State. And then this stuff hit. We're all locked in our rooms. I'm like, how am I supposed to make extra money? And it's, yeah. that's when the creativity stuff starts kicking in. I started adding graphic design, started doing stuff from home. It's all that type of stuff where you have to think about your strengths and now think, how can I use them from where I'm at? And I think that's something you're doing really well too, is because you're finding these different ways. Like you're working three jobs right now when oh, yeah. like most oh, people are having a hard time a finding moment. anything, right? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it's like, all right, think about what your strengths are. Think about what's available and think about what you can do for yourself. So many people are just worried about like, well, I'm a, I'm a marketing major. There's no marketing internships. I guess I can't do well, anything. If you think like that, then of course you're not going to do anything. You got to really open up your mind and be like, okay, Thank what you. else can I do? Yes. Can I do it for myself? Can maybe, maybe I don't get a paid internship. Maybe I just go shadow someone or maybe I take this time to download. I know during COVID, everything was kind of like free for a little bit. Like maybe you download some Adobe software and you start to teach yourself some new skills. Like yes. that's really how you progress and kind of deepen your tool belt. Maybe you take this time, you know what? I might know Spanish. Let me learn a new language. Yes. Maybe let's start going on Duolingo and all these cool things. Like it's better than sitting there wallowing and your yes. kind of self-pity trying to figure out, well, dang, woe is me. Like I can't find a job. I can't do whatever. Well, with that attitude, you're never going to find one. You really need to go yeah. out there and push forward. So yeah, I was yeah, no, for sure. And so, so overall, yeah, it's really creativity. It's figuring out what you want. And if what, if what's driving you at the end of the day is just, what do I want? What's my end goal? Then yeah, it could look like you work in a couple hours a week doing whatever job, you know, for somebody else that you want to do. That's totally fine. I'm not saying that like you have to be this mad side hustler. Oh, it's no. like, if you want to be able to, you know, work a couple hours on the weekend, go home, hang out with friends, like that's totally fine. And for me, like, right. When you hear me talking about like, okay, hard work, all this type of stuff, like that's what I genuinely enjoy. Like I genuinely love the hustle of like having multiple things going at the same time. I know you're the same way, Amanda. Yeah. And just, it's not to be careful everybody. not to drop the ball sometimes because yeah. you're like juggling too many things and you're like, Oh my God, I forgot I threw that. Let me catch that real quick. Uh, yep. You know? And, and when that starts happening, when you start dropping stuff, that's when you're like, okay, I got to evaluate my commitments. Yeah. Figure I got to step back. Type of stuff. Yeah. That I can, that I can actually take a look at and see if I can, you know, see, see what I can do. You know, oh. when you're looking for new things to get involved in as a leader, what mm -hmm. types of stuff are you looking for that you feel like can be a good like return on investment? So I look for things that I sort of already have in my tool belt. I know people yep. look at strengths and weaknesses very differently. Like some people, you know, they look at themselves and they're like, okay, well, these are the things that I'm really good at. So I don't want to push forward. I want to focus on my weaknesses and grow from them. But I think when you're starting out and you're trying to look for something that you can easily fit into or just slide right in, I think it's easier to focus on things that you were strong at. And yeah. that's what I look for. So I look for things that not only am I somewhat strong in, but something that I'm going to enjoy. I obviously don't want to go out and work a job that I hate just to say that I'm working a job. 
Thanks so much for watching this week's episode of Taking a Breath. If you like what you saw, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Taking a Breath Podcast and subscribe for new episodes every week. In addition, we've got the link in the description for the full audio version, which you can check out if you want more from this episode. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again next week.